would like to welcome everyone today and just give you all a big thank you uh, for being here. I know everybody's really busy, um, but we just really felt it was important to recognize all you strong women who have um, been able to create um, create an idea and, and be dedicated to making it come to fruition. And you all have done that and um, you're all successful. And I thank you so much for being a part of this. So this is our first Ask Me Anything. So hopefully everything goes smoothly and there's no glitches and the technology works good. So, um, but just to let you know, UBS uh, Financial uh, Services has sponsored this event and they have um, sponsored a, a gift for each one of our panelists. So that was very nice of them. And um, I'm just gonna give them an itty bitty little plug. So. Um, they offer a variety of services for individuals and companies, including planning, investing, banking, wealth management, and retirement plan services. So Justin Henk uh, was the individual that worked with me, and um, he graciously um, talked with his company, and they, they said they would sponsor. So we're very, very excited about that. So, um, so as most of you know, October recognizes women in small business. And we wanted to give some women in our community an opportunity to talk about themselves. And because, um, you know, us women, we like to talk about ourselves apparently. So, um, but kind of talk about your business and um, just answer some questions that um, are important to um, women um, and how things, how we look at our businesses and things like that. So <clears throat> I'd like to first um, introduce our panel. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to, I'll say your name. And when I say your name, unmute yourself and just um, maybe tell, well, tell obviously what your business is. And then if you have a little bit of um, description maybe of the business or something that you know, you'd like to share that you feel is important about your business, that would be great too. So I'll give you each a little bit of time to do that. So <clears throat> I am actually just gonna, there's no, just kind of a random order I'm doing this in, so. Okay, so I have um, um, Alexis Clay, it's Clayson, right? Yeah, hi, it is. Okay, that's, that's what right, I thought. Clayson. Okay, so okay. go ahead. Um, well, yes, I'm Alexis Clayson. I am the owner of Alexis Clayson and Associates DDS, which is a dental office. Um, I've been working in the dental field since I was 16 years old. And it has always been a goal of mine to own my own practice. Um, and I graduated from dental school in 2006. So it took me a, a few years to achieve that goal, but um, I finally did in August of this year. Um, I bought Dr. Todd Stoner's practice in Bowling Green, and I'm just, I'm thrilled that I get to do this in Bowling Green. I love the BG community, um, and I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you as well as kind of becoming familiar with the other businesses and other owners in BG. So thanks for having me, Bethany. Great. Dr. Dr. K, yeah. this is Mary Henkelman, um, the executive director. And okay. I just wanted to say you are really rocking it on Twitter. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> oh, I'll tell my marketing person that you said that. Thank you. We loved your little Listerine uh Okay. Oh, the dreams <laughs> challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Okay. All right. Beth Jensen. Hi, I'm Beth Jensen, and I own Lola Group LLC, and that is a uh, magazine company. So I print the BG City Guide at home in Wood County and the library magazines that go home with the kids through the schools. Uh, I'm also an artist, and so as part of my self employment I teach classes and sell my artwork. So. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, Deb. Where? Hi, um, I'm Deb mm -hmm. Bearwalt, owner and um, operator or therapist, I guess you could say, at Healing Sapphire Massage. Um, I'm right above Beth <laughs> in the tower downtown uh, Bowling Green, and I get to look at the lovely Waddington Jewelry Store building uh, uh, during my uh, day. Um, I've been offering um, Swedish and therapeutic massage for uh, over eight years now, and I also do Reiki and um, other holistic options for treating and preventing common issues. So 
Do you have any need for that kind of thing for yourself for a gift? Just holler. Great, thank you. Okay, Jennifer Kearns. Hi everybody, I'm Jen. Uh, my business is Battery Wholesale. Uh, we have a, a relatively new location there in Bowling Green, kind of on the north end of town. Um, I am a small battery retail chain of stores. I actually own seven locations in Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. I go up as far into um, Adrian and then down as south as Bowling Green. Uh, we've been open since 83 um, and we sell to the general community, the general public, um, household batteries, you know, car batteries, truck batteries, anything that you can imagine, stuff for, you know, your portable devices, you know, anything along those lines, uh, alarm systems, I mean, you name it. Um, but we do have a business to business division that we sell to, you know, other operations, other businesses and commercial applications and, and you know, larger supply. Um, but uh, the majority of the business is just general, you know, household to the to the public, the, the general consumer. So basic retail, but, but a specialty type of a, of a operation. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. Okay, Kathy Wilhelm. Can she hear me, Kathy? Do you hear me? Coming at you. Yep, <laughs> you, were, you were frozen, but then I heard my name. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy. Now you're frozen on me. A full-time portrait photography studio for 32 years. And we specialize in high school seniors, kids, families, and business portraits. Okay. And I don't know, you froze up for me at first. I don't know if you froze for everyone else, um, but mention again the company because that froze out and I didn't hear that. But now you're frozen. Oh, there we go. Uh, okay, I'm going to give the first part again because we're having a bad connection, I think, because I didn't hear much of what you just asked me. But um, my name is Kathy Wilhelm, and my sister Cheryl and I have Hegemeyer Fine Photography. Um, we've been full time photography studio for 32 years, and we are out on County Home Road. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, Robin. Okay, I'm unmuted. Hi, I'm Robin Stearns. I own Thunderstruck Transportation. Uh, we're a flatbed trucking company. We haul steel products, steel parts, uh, regionally, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana. Uh, we have uh, started out the business in 2012. I was the operations manager and in 2017 bought it. And um, let's see, we currently run 24 trucks. So if anyone needs a coil of steel hauled, I can help you out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, business is good. We are a, uh, just received our uh, women-owned business certification uh, beginning of this year. And so super proud of that. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jen Waddington. Hi, I'm Jen Waddington of Waddington Jewelers. Me and my husband have owned our jewelry store for 15 years. We are a fine jewelry store. We also carry sterling silver and I do, I'm a bench jeweler and a designer. So we can do all of the repair work and design things that you would possibly need for jewelry here in our store. And I always find it interesting, your schedules um, totally don't coincide, do they? Um, I take advantage of quiet time. So I'm a night owl and You'll see me up at the store till two o'clock in the morning sometimes whenever I have a lot of work on my bench. So I was gonna say, I've, I've seen you in there. <laughs> okay. All right, next up is Erica Sleek. Hello, um, I'm Erica Sleek and I'm the owner and director of All About the Kids Learning Center. I have owned that for 15 years. I started it fi um, 15 years ago. It's a preschool childcare. So we take care of six weeks all the way through sixth grade. We do before and after care, infant, toddler, and preschool. And then I am also the owner of Sleek Academy, which is a private charter school, K through 12th grade, based on STEAM, science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics. And we just opened that, I just opened that three years ago. So this will be our third official year this year, 
opening. Um, and that's what I do. Uh, both are on Ordway Avenue. Um, they're right across the street from each other, which is very convenient, uh, or rather sometimes very convenient. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I take care of kids, educate children. Great. So if you see her walking or running crazily across the street, it's going. Yeah. <laughs> I really do need to put an Ordway path. Like. <laughs> They're going to make her pay for the paving next time they have to reach Absolutely. <laughs> okay, and Ashley Vetter. Hi, I'm Ashley Vetter of Ashley Vetter Design. I have just passed my year mark of having my own um, design and marketing business. I started in September of 2019. Um, prior to that, I had worked in advertising agencies in both Toledo and Bowling Green. Um, I am a designer by trade, but I have um, do art direction for photography and video shoots and websites, and also have an extensive network of media buyers and all of those things. So I offer all of the services of an agency um, with design as a core. Great. Okay. Thank you. And like I said before, Dusty Pendleton of um, Retro Detailing was supposed to join us today, but she um, emailed me earlier this morning and she is sick, so she could not be part of the panel. So hopefully she'll be feeling better. So, okay. So um, really quickly, we have some guests and we thought it would be nice if, for those of you in the audience to um, just give a shout out. So when I say your name, um, I don't, I noticed some of you are actually, it looks like a majority of you are not using um, video. So um, if I say your name, if you just want to say hi, maybe who you're with, um, if you're with a business, um, and then we'll just go from there. I, will, I won't make you um, show your face if you don't feel inclined to do that. So, okay, so um, we've got Mary Davenport Yand. I see you're here. Hi there. Hello. And Mary, would you like to say what company you're with? Sure. I own and operate an Ameriprise Financial Services franchise here in Bowling Green. Okay, super. Okay. And I'm a certified financial planner. Thank you. Um, I don't think Dee Meyer is here. I didn't, I don't think I saw her. Tony Vetter. Yeah, this is Tony Vetter with downtown Bowling Green Special Improvement District. And my sister-in-law is Kathy, who spoke a little bit ago, and her and my wife have been in business for a long time. So I do <clears throat> have a little bit of understanding of the uh, women business community a little bit, because if I don't want to know it, Kathy and Cheryl tell me about it all the time. <laughs> and you look so young. Look at that picture. Yeah. What a difference 25 years will make, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think Sandra was here either. Sandra King um, was here. Um, Jim Ferris. There we go. All right. I got myself off mute. Um, <laughs> however, I don't use Zoom. This is the first time I've tried to do it, so I can't, I can't figure out how to show my, uh, my beautiful face, but that's all right. Um, but I will tell you, I'm um, Jim Ferris, a business banker uh, right here in, uh, in Bowling Green uh, with uh, Huntington Bank. And uh, been with uh, the Mid Am Sky Huntington family for uh, 25 years this year. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, Robin, I'm assuming, is Robin Cruz's Fours. Yep, that's me. <laughs> I'm Robin Cruz's Fours. I'm with the Sentinel Tribune. I'm a multimedia account executive handling print and digital, all types of digital advertising. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Robin. Um, Stephen? Yeah, good morning. <clears throat> I'm Stephen Ball. I own and operate uh, the two McDonald's in Bowling Green alongside my father. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, I don't think, I don't think I saw Veronica or Luann. So, um, Melinda. <clears throat> Hi there, I'm Melinda Kale, and I'm CEO of Work Least Independence. We support uh, opportunities for people with disabilities. We are in the Herring House Furniture Facility. We bought that a couple years ago, which is right over here by Polly Eyes. And we also manage the farmer's market that's downtown. And I wanna give a shout out to my past and present board members, Erica and Beth. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, and Jody Anderson. <clears throat> There we go. I'm here. Oh, there she is. Here I am. Uh, I'm Jody Anderson. I'm the secondary curriculum coordinator for Bowling Green City Schools. So um, this group would probably appreciate it as I'm enrolling girls in our what will now be our virtual girls who code program uh, as we speak. So awesome. Yeah. So great to hear from all of you. Great. Well, thank you. Okay. So um, let's get started. So the first question I have is for four of our panelists and we're gonna start with Beth Jensen. So please tell us what being a business owner means to you and why you became an entrepreneur in the first place. Unmute yourself. <laughs> there we go, sorry. <laughs> um, to me, being a business owner means that I have flexibility and freedom to um, do things the way I want to do them and to respond to what I see in the marketplace and to work with local businesses around the county uh, to help promote their businesses to the right uh, audience. So when I started the company, um, you know, there were, there were some things like the library was struggling to find a way to reach um, parents with children, you know, how do you reach them? How do you get in front of them? And so we partnered with the schools to uh, do a magazine, a family magazine that would go home with the children in the schools. And then that gave businesses in the area, the opportunity to, that wanted to reach families with children, um, the opportunity to reach those people. And I've tried to do that with all the publications that I do, including the, the city guide, which goes to every, is mailed to everyone in with the 43402 address. And also with at home in Wood County, which goes to the entire county. Great, thank you. Okay, this is like hard for me because I gotta do like three things at once, time you, ring you and watch you. <laughs> okay, so um, Erica, we're gonna give you that same question. Do you want me to repeat it or are you okay with it? No, that's good. I, I yeah. Um, so I really wanted to be a business owner because I wanted to help kids. So it wasn't really necessarily that I wanted to be a business owner. It just turned out that way because I don't take direction well. I like to make my own rules. I'm, I'll admit that. <laughs> so it was better. I worked at a, um, what happened was I went to a um, a facility in Chicago. My aunt is a nun when I was 16 and it was like a halfway house. And kids were addicted to drugs, addicted to stuff before they were even born. And I thought, wow, you know, who helps these kids? Like, who can prevent this? And on the way home, my aunt told me that people who take care of kids, child care providers, are required by law to report the abuse. And then someone can come in and help them. And I said, well, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to help kids. So I graduated from BGSU, go Falcons, and uh, <laughs> um, worked for a child care center here in town for three years and then opened my own 15 years ago. So that's why I opened All About the Kids. And then Sleek Academy is in addition to All About the Kids. About 2014, uh, parents uh, came to me because All About the Kids is project-based, which means that we, we follow a curriculum, but we get these kids out there and they do things. If we talk about space, we go to the planetarium. If we talk about pumpkins, we go get pumpkins. If we talk about apples and orchards, we go pick them and then we come back and make applesauce, apple pie. So it's learning by doing. And about 2014, a group of parents came to me and said, we want to learn by doing Erica K through 12. And I said, well, go for it. <laughs> go ahead and open a school if you want. And they said, well, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. How about you open it and we will come. So kind of like Kevin Costner, you build it, we will come. So I built it and now they're coming. So <laughs> my K through 12 STEAM school is it's two separate businesses, but it's an addition to what we typically, what we are doing with the younger kids. So being a business owner is really important to me because we want to give back to the community and Bowling Green is an amazing community. I love Bowling Green. So every project that our kids do at STEAM at Sleek Academy, we have to give back to the community. So they build things and donate them to local shelters. They uh, put things together. Uh, we'll, we're building an underground greenhouse that will then also provide food for pantries, for food pantries. So and I would be able and I don't have a board that I have to go to. I don't have I can do all of that with my decisions. These are our decisions. 
I don't have to report back to anyone. Well, okay, the ODE and the ODJFS, but they leave you alone if, if you follow their rules. So. <laughs> oh, good. So you've been able to make your own decisions, just what you wanted, right? <laughs> Correct. Yes. Okay. All Correct. right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Robin Stern, same question. All right. There you go. Um, let's see. What does being a business owner mean to me? Um, as was previously stated, I don't take direction well. Um, I like to control the outcome. And I'm actually very good with that because I know that win or lose, it's all on me. And I like those odds. I really do. Um, the military, I was in the military for 10 years. And it taught me so much about leadership and decision making. It built my confidence as a woman. I mean, just so many positive aspects that came out of it. And um, I came out holding up my head high and uh, somehow found myself in the trucking industry. Um, it was completely different than what I did in the Navy. But um, I don't know, through the, through the course of time, I learned the things I needed to learn and um, combined that with what I had from the Navy. It was honestly... Becoming an entrepreneur was just kind of a natural progression for me. Um, it, it just came, e I won't, yeah, came easily. It, it really did. Stepping into that role, um, I had looked for it. I had strived for it for, I don't know, about 20 years. Um, and what I found was as an operations manager, which I was for many years for a couple different companies, is that. I was the operations manager, but I didn't get a whole lot of say so in the running, the overall decision making of the company. And I had, you know, really great ideas. I had, you know, things I wanted to implement and they were not welcomed. So I just said, okay, well, we're just gonna, and with the help of a friend, um, my husband and I started, well, I, I was operations manager to begin with, 19. You know, like two minutes so i'm gonna <laughs> i don't want to cut you off but i want you to so if you can wrap it up real quick that'd be great <laughs> oh, sorry about that we can maybe come back to you can tell that tell your story of how you started okay but at the end yeah maybe come back that's okay yeah sure okay um okay jen waddington yes same, Same question. question. Sorry. <laughs> well, ironically, I never really wanted to be a business owner. I always kind of wanted to clock in and clock out and work for somebody else. However, being a business owner, I've discovered that there is some more flexibility, which is why you see me at the store until two o'clock in the morning, because that's when I actually like to work. Um, that being said, me and my husband make a really good team because I get to play and do the design work and there's lots of different aspects in business. So I think like one of the big things is you got to figure out where your niche is and what you're good at and concentrate on your strengths and let other people take over where you're not so strong. Like technology, not one of my strengths. So I have other people that take care of that for me. Being a business owner, you can designate those jobs to the people that can do those things better than you. So I think um, overall, being a business owner does give you some flexibility but it also gives you, you are the one in charge. And so if you see your weaknesses, you can find ways to improve on those things. It's good, good way to look at it. Okay, <clears throat> the next question goes to three of our panelists and we're gonna start with uh, Dr. Clayson. What's the best advice you have received in business that you wish to pass to our guests? Okay. Are you on your call? Okay, so I guess it's not advice that I've, been given, but it's a quote that I read a long time ago that I really think about almost every day. Right. And it is something along the lines of to be a good business owner or leader, you don't have to be the best at everything. You just have to find people who are great at different things yeah. and get them all on the same team. And I really feel like I did that. Um, before I even bought the dental practice, I made some phone calls to contacts that I've worked with in the past and said, hey, I really wanna do this. I wanna do it with you on my team. Um, so a hygienist, Brooke Roberts, an assistant, Jerry Brossi, and my business manager, Dominic Olick, 
Um, they all made this journey with me. Um, Dominic moved from Michigan to come work in my office. So that was so important to me to get that core team. Oh, was that my bell? No, no, somebody just. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, You're pretty close so, yeah, that. Uh, no, I'll, I'll wrap up, but that was, that's my advice. Um, build your team, devote a lot of energy to motivating your team, um, and you'll be successful because you can't do it by yourself. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ashley Vetter, same question goes to you. Um, my advice came, <clears throat> I had just left my job, which I had been at for over 10 years at a reputable advertising agency in Toledo. And one of a friend and mentor who's had a photography business, his own independent commercial photography business for over 30 years, gives me a call. He's like, I heard a rumor. <laughs> and he, him and I had talked extensively previously before I had left my job. And all he's told me, he's like, don't lower your price for clients to meet what they, where they want you to be. You're too valuable for that. And I've stuck with that. And every time somebody's kind of but not so sure about a quote or something like that, I just have that in the back of my head and saying, I'm too valuable for that. And you get good clients, they respect your work. And I've learned that over the past year that um, yeah, that work is worth it and worth it to fight for it. Yeah, that's good. I, I, my husband tells me that all the time. <laughs> I think we as women undervalue ourselves a lot. So yeah, that was why I wanted to answer that. Yep, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yep. Okay, same question goes to Deb. Okay, um, so like one of the others, it wasn't necessarily advice uh, that I was given directly, but it was a phrase that someone used many, many years ago, and he's a very successful businessman. And that is that the door of opportunity is there for people. And many people live with fear and let fear guide them or run them. <clears throat> and so they don't stop through that door, step through that door of opportunity. And what he said was, you know, step through that door of opportunity. You're never going to know what's on the other side until you do. And, you know, you can always turn around and come back or you can take the next door that's beyond that and you can grow yourself, you can grow your business and um, just kind of pay attention to the details around you and you can really take people on a successful journey along the way. So that's um, kind of boils down to utilize your opportunities and don't live in fear. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> Jen Waddington, same question. So being in a retail environment that's a little bit different than some of the other professions that you guys are in, I feel like one of the biggest things in retail is you can't be everything to everybody. So you really need to concentrate on where your business is going and be strong in what you're strong at. But don't try to be everything because you can't. And if you are trying to do something on the side that isn't what you're best at, people will get discouraged with you because you can't provide them a good service, even if it's not what you concentrate on. So you're better off concentrating on a few small areas and being excellent at those few small areas than trying to be everything for everybody. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> Next question is for Jen Kearns. Are there resources or tools you'd like to share with other small business owners that have helped you run your business? Um, yeah, I think so. I, I, I thought about this, you know, for a little while thinking, you know, what, what could I, you know, provide to so many different, um, you know, so different variety, you know, of women and, and other folks that are going to be calling in. Um, but the, the one tool I think that for myself, that's been the most valuable in providing myself with knowledge, expertise, and confidence is uh, achieving my MBA. And um, within the MBA, there was a class that I took um, that talked about things that you wouldn't necessarily think about in, in a program like that. And, and one was talking about emotional intelligence and the other was talking about uh, generations and understanding generations. 
And there was a book I read and I don't have it here, but there are probably, this was, you know, 10, 12 years ago, but the book that I read was called Generations at Work. And I'm sure there are, you know, new books out there or more updated because of all the different generations, but it was so um, interesting and, and helpful for me to understand the group of employees that I have underneath me and, and what it is that makes them tick and why and, and how they grew up and, and what kind of you know generation they were in and, and, and their different types of work ethic and how they feel rewarded and how they feel um, valued. And so you know that tool to me has been something that has been almost invaluable, I should say, uh, when it comes to you know managing my people and, and making sure that they stick around. I, I have a pretty good retention rate here. Uh, and, and I'd like to, I like kind of pat myself on the back a little bit, but just making sure I understand where each of them are coming from. I, I think it's really important. Yeah, that's, that is really good. We had a lunch and learn um, with the employers association. And, and he, that was one of the topics was understanding your generations and knowing how you, how you relate how you can get them to relate to each other and not yeah. get frustrated because they don't get it the same way you do. So absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Next question is for Kathy Wilhelm. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Same question goes to you, Kathy. Are there any resources or tools you'd like to share with other small business owners that help you run your business? I think um, resources, the most important thing that we have done in the last 10 years is to make sure that we are well networked. So things like the chamber, um, other network organizations, but to find strength in community means that I really didn't start doing a lot of business networking until we were about 25 years into our business. Part of that was because our business was pulling from almost a two hour radius. But as the photography market changed, I understood it was in my community. And it has given me so many resources to better serve my clients. So I think um, I would encourage anyone in business to not wait 25 years to join networking communities, but to make that part of your foundation from the beginning. Great, thank you. Okay, um, let's see here. I think I missed a page. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, Ashley Vetter, next question. Um, how do you choose to give back? Are you active in the community? Do you have any outreach projects? Um, I am extremely involved in the Wood County 4-H program, as Kathy also knows. I'm a club advisor um, on 4-H committee. Um, I'm a board member of the Clover Legacy Foundation, which is kind of the financial arm of Wood County 4-H. Um, and I've also just completed my first year as a trustee on the Bowling Green Community Foundation. Um, so lots of there. Um, I just this past weekend, I received an investor grant um, for a workshop for designers that I was finally able to schedule this past weekend. I received the grant in February and then the world happened. <laughs> so um, I was able to host the workshop this past weekend on Saturday and we did it at the Rotary Nature Center. And I had seven designers come and we talked and I kind of gave them a typical designer's day scenario and threw some things at them to kind of, they were working, but I was teaching while they were working. And um, I had a fun day and they learned things. I learned some things from them. And um, that was a really cool way to give back that was made possible by the chamber. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see here. Okay, so um, the next question is for three of our panelists, I think. I think I changed it to four because I had to take um, I had to move some things around. So uh, next question is for Beth Jensen. 
What's the one thing you have learned as a small business owner that has served you well over the years? Well, the number one thing that I would say has already been mentioned by several other people. So I think it's what's helped all of us is hiring people that know more than you do about certain areas of your business. So that to me was a real key and something I hadn't seen. I won't say I hadn't seen a lot of in my previous positions, but a lot of times that expertise was not utilized the way it should be. So, um, you know, I felt that a lot of times people were hired perhaps because of their expertise, but then that was not, not used. It was, they were told that they were wrong or, or not it, their, their information or their suggestions weren't accepted. So I think that's super important. And then just a couple other things that I've learned is don't expect perfection. You know, you know, I, when I started out, it was like, I, you know, this has to be perfect. Everything has to be just so, you know, and I, and you get, and no matter what you're doing, I think that if perfection is not necessarily the goal, because most of the time people don't, well, all the time, really, other people don't know what your vision of perfection is. So when they see, you know, what you've done, they're, they're pleased, they're either pleased with it or not, but it's not necessarily their expectation of your if that makes sense, your expectation of perfection. And then the last thing I would say is just admit your mistakes and take responsibility for them because you're gonna make mistakes. And if you admit those and take responsibility right away, especially when working with a client, um, you know, they understand, you know, and they'll, they'll work it out with you. Yeah, there's more respect for you when you're straightforward, you know, like that. <laughs> okay, same question to Deb Bearwall. Okay, so one of the things that um, I feel has served me well in various businesses that I have uh, done is that when I came to the realization that I am one of many, many people that do what I do. And the thing that sets my business apart is me. And I need to connect in some way to my clients. I feel that what I do is a very connected type of business and emotional connection is as important as the physical connection with the actual act, of course, of the massage or uh, the Reiki treatment that the person is getting. Um, and with that, being honest and genuine with the clients is of utmost importance. If I feel that there's someone who would be better suited to treat them or part of what their condition is, I will forward them on to someone else. Kind of like you other ladies had said that um, utilize the people that are best in your business for those areas. Well, I'm a one, one woman show here. So um, I have a group that I refer out to that are fabulous practitioners. Um, and customer service is so important. Getting back to people with phone calls, um, follow up, checking back with them after their sessions, things like that. And um, just giving them the best of my ability to enable them to release what it is they're trying to get rid of. Uh, a lot of times that's almost always, it's an emotional and physical package. And so letting that go, leaving it on the table and um, moving on is, is a big, big part of that. So what sets us apart in our business is us not necessarily what we do. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm gonna jump around a little bit. So uh, next question is for Alexis. How do you choose to give back to the community? Are you active in some way? Do you do any outreach programs? Um, being a new business, we have a lot of plans. Um, some are for single events and some are you know, bigger long-term plans. Um, I believe it's Rhonda. Um, I was in the Navy too. And one of our first um, events is gonna be on Veterans Day. We're gonna do a day of free dental care for veterans. Um, so if any of you have employees or neighbors or family members that need anything from a cleaning to a crown to a filling, um, have them call us. That's something that we're just gonna grow into a bigger and better event hopefully every year. Um, you know, using our talents to say thank you and show gratitude in a unique way is going to be incredible. Um, 
kind of a long-term plan that I'm hoping to do to give back is I really want to work with Wood Lane um, the, to provide the, the residents um, access and the ability to get dental care. Um, often adults with disabilities are too hard or too difficult or need too much for a general dentist to help them out. Um, and I've been in contact with Wood Lane to try to start to develop a way that we can fix that, that we can make sure that they have access to, to dental treatment um, more readily. So those are two of the things that I look forward to doing too, uh, you know, in the, in the yeah. upcoming year. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, um, same question to Robin Stearns. How do you choose to give back? Are you active in the community? Do you have any outreach programs? Well, uh, currently for about the past year, I have uh, been active with the uh, Committee on Aging, with County Committee on Aging. I deliver meals um, to the folks over in North Baltimore, but um, it's gone beyond that for me. Uh, my involvement um, I want to grow that. I've, I've asked them, the, you know, at the senior center over there, it's like walking into a garage. And so I wanted it to be a pleasant place. So I'm working with them to um, paint it, hang pictures and so on. Um, so, you know, that's kind of where I'm focused at. Um, I did, you know, it was briefly during COVID, but for goodness sakes, two months. Uh, I sewed masks. I gave them over to the community, or I'm sorry, the um, uh, the Committee on Aging over there in North Baltimore, the senior center there and hospitals. And we also uh, raised $1,000 each for two different churches by selling the masks. So I was just kind of using what I was good at, I suppose, so to speak. Um, and then um, again, I'm looking at expanding my involvement with the Committee on Aging. I, I just, they, I have a soft spot for them. And, uh, you know, they're, it's an area of our community that is so often overlooked. So well, thank that's, you. that's where my passion is. That's nice. Well, it's good to have, you know, when you have a, something you're passionate about, you, you want to do more anyway. So it's just kind of a natural fit then. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, Jen Kearns, um, what's one thing you have learned as a small business owner that has served you well over the years? Sure. Um, well, one of the, I guess, main things that I, I had to do in order to allow myself to grow and, and, and build my business was to actually uh, let go of control. Um, I, like many of you, became the person that I am in business because I wanted to control. I wanted to make sure that I had the say, I had, you know, the, the, the last word or, you know, what, whatever, that, that my policies were going to be in place and this is how it's going to run because you know, I have, I needed that, I guess, for me. But um, over the last several years, I've, I've learned how to let that go a bit um, and how important it is to delegate and how important it is to accept feedback and input from the rest of your team. Um, that if I didn't have that, if I didn't accept that and let go of that kind of control, I probably wouldn't have been able to be successful in opening the two additional stores that I had my hands on. Um, but, you know, again, allowing people to, you know, to delegation, you know, allowing people to take on some of the things that, you know, you feel you need to control and, and you know, not really sweating the small stuff, I guess. Yeah, that's good advice. I think not just in business, but in just every aspect of your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I tell you what, we are getting to a point, we have about a little over 10 minutes. So I wanna make sure that um, we have two questions that came from um, registration. So I wanna make sure those two get addressed. So I'm gonna have, um, Sandra had a question. Are you here, Sandra? Or did she, did she leave? No, I'm here, I'm oh, here. 
So Sandra, you weren't here when we did um, our little um, introduction. So if you want to say right. um, maybe who you're with, so we can kind of, are you not willing to show your face? I, you don't have to, I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm late. I'm sorry. I'm no, late. You're fine. So just say who you're with so we can kind of have a idea of your background. Well, Hello, ladies, and thank you for doing it. It's always nice to hear from some successful local professionals in the small business industry. I am Sandra King, and I am the manager for AA Green Realty in Bowling Green. And I try to mentor and coach a group of about 20 realtors. And sometimes letting go is a real challenge for me. So I really love, I've taken a lot of notes already. And I had a question, what was my question? Okay, so I'm going to give this question to Kathy. I have, I think Kathy and Erica are the only two that have not had two questions yet. So okay. I, want to, I want to shoot one out to her. So okay. Sandra, your question was, how did you get started and how long did it take until you felt successful? That's right. Okay, so um, uh, on, the, on the Cliff Notes version, um, I was so running three departments in a 120 bed nursing home facility I had a set of twins and I decided I needed a life change so then Cheryl and I went into business with Hegemeyer Fine Photography I gave up our benefits because my husband's also self-employed and um, stepped out in total faith into a career I knew very little about and my first order was less than a hundred dollars that I wrote up. I went home and pushed my twins on the swing and thought we are not going to be able to eat. <laughs> but was because grit kept kicked in, and Cheryl and I knew that we had to do this. Um, while I did share with you that we didn't network locally right away, we certainly networked in our profession immediately with people who really knew how to make the business work. And we tried to be very good students. And one wise thing my sister always said was, if we ever think we all have it all figured out, we'll be done. And so to believe that there is always something new and improved that can happen to your business even after 30 years to believe that when things get tough you are going to use grit to move through it to get to the other side and to believe in yourself enough to make your dream happen is invaluable and when we went from writing up a senior order that was less than a hundred dollars to shooting 450 seniors a year and being in the top 2% of our color lab that service 16,000 studios in the nation, we felt that as a team, we had met our goal. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jim Ferris had the other question and we're gonna give this one to Erica. Jim, do you remember your question? Do you want me to read it? You probably don't remember it. Re read it, read it, please, I do not. Do you see the model of your business changing post COVID? Wow, I think that's a really great question for me because my simple answer is no. <laughs> I stayed open the whole time other than when the governor closed my school. So um, all about the kids stayed open the entire time. We had a pandemic childcare license um, and Sleek Academy, we opened as soon as we were able to open. So no, I don't see any changes. I think that, I mean, we're clean anyway. I mean, we, we, we've we had so many different communicable diseases at All About the Kids. I don't even want to tell you how disgusting they are. I've seen so much over the last 20 years that I'm not saying that this is not a bad virus. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that I'm OCD anyway. So my center is clean. My school is clean. Um, I told one of the families, the only thing that they are requiring us to do um, now that this has happened, that we didn't already do at our, both the school and the center are taking temperatures, everything else we've always done because that's best practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you work with kids and they stick things in their mouth and they pick their nose all day and they pick their butt and they do all this fun stuff, you have to be clean. I mean, that stuff is disgusting. So, and um, 
Dr. Gleason, I work at Wood Lane as well, Wood Lane Residential. So I've worked there for 27 years. So I'm all about universal precautions anyway. So no, I don't see either one of my businesses changing after this. Great, thank you. Well, it's 12.53, so um, we do, I mean, I think we have a couple minutes. So actually, I wonder if any of you want to answer that question also. Do you see anything that you're going to be doing differently moving forward since COVID? I mean, you're free to unmute and... I Nobody? think the big uptick in e-commerce and selling online and creating websites for making making a more digital experience for brick and mortar stores. But yeah. um, that was something that was happening anyway, and it's kind of given been given a little push. <laughs> but other than that, um, I work with a client that has a lot of building industry. Um, building industry professionals and they're booming. That market is um, very doing very well. <laughs> and this, this has forced us to move into this virtual You were crazy, but but we have learned how to successfully use some of these tools to really offer other flexible options to our clients and they're receptive. And it's not going to stay as part of our business model in every area, but it will remain after COVID, we will make some of these virtual options available and our, our client, clients are receiving it well and our sales are actually improved. So it's forced us to be better at serving our clients in a new space. And I don't think we would have ventured into that had we not. And we've learned how to maintain relationship in a virtual uh, environment. And I think that only comes with moving through the learning curve. Okay. Well, I mean, that's pretty much the questions we have. Is there anything that any of you, I mean, whether it be someone in the audience or a panelist, anything you'd like to share? We have maybe a couple more minutes. Anything anyone would like to ask or share? Can I talk for just a second, please, Bethany? Absolutely. This has been fantastic. And I just want to thank each and every one of you panelists. Um, I just feel like I know each of you so much better. Um, it, it, I am leaving this going. This has to be something we continue to do um, as a part of people understanding women are women in business. And we have a lot of women in business. Um, each of you has really presented yourself so spectacularly and um yeah, like I said, it's been wonderful getting to know you a little bit more. Thank you so much for being a part. So hopefully, you know, moving forward, we can, you know, have different ways or different topics maybe to do moving forward and maybe it won't be women maybe it can be something else next time so but um i thank you so much for your time and the time that you put into thinking thoughtfully about the questions and 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 overcoming any technical technical difficulties you may have had doing this so um but truly from the bottom of my heart this is the first time we've done this kind of thing and i am so happy with how it turned out i thank you so so much and um, like I said, you each have um, some downtown dollars in the office. If you can't make it in the office, I can mail them to you too. So just let me know. But um, I hope you guys have a great day. And um, thank you so much again.